people, this is Shiva, I'm Bodoni, and I'm Wendy, and welcome to Things Fall Together. Together. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies, Miss mm -hmm. Rona has decided to be one of those visitors who visit your home and decide they're never leaving. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we thought it would be like a one month thing. Aye. But you know, we're going into like our fifth, sixth month of Rona. Yeah. 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 And it sort of looks like there's no light at the end of this tunnel. Mm -hmm. And you know, Corona, COVID-19 has brought such devastation, yeah. not only here in Kenya, but just across the globe. And so many people have been affected, whether financially, people have lost jobs, yeah. you know, people have lost lives, people have lost loved ones, and it takes a toll. It does. Mm -hmm. You know? And, uh, you know, despite the devastation that Rona has brought, mm -hmm. we still have to keep our sanity, we still oh, have sure. to protect our mental sure. spaces. And I'm so curious to find out what are you ladies doing mm -hmm. to sort of just keep your sanity going to yeah. keep sane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Shaba, you look absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. So tell us your secret. You look so well put together. Uh, yes. <laughs> so how am I putting myself together every yeah. single day? I just I been putting some structure into my life, uh -huh. trying to find some routine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that organization keeps me sane. Yeah. And I've also been trying to at least get some exercise in yeah. every couple yeah. of days. Okay. I am not perfect. I don't do it every day. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I've tried to set some time aside for that. And just also spiritually, you know, at the end of the day, taking some time, reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Nice. It's working. <laughs> it is. It's working. <laughs> it's working for you, girl. Keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy, what yeah. have you been doing? How are you keeping sane? Oh, my God. I think every day is an effort. Every yeah. day is yeah. a new day to start again. Yeah. And try to, you know, stay centered, mm -hmm. stay focused, yeah. stay positive. Yeah. And I find that I'm finding pleasure and quiet and peace in a very simple thing like just taking a shower. Oh. And just taking a shower intentionally. Okay. Just letting the hot water roll over my body. Uh -huh. I just feel that stress going away. Yeah. And away. because of course like you said Sheba, this yeah. you you have to manufacture your own routine. Yeah. yeah. It's so easy to go by a whole day and not just Shower. I don't know those people, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, in the house, the whole day, none of us, yeah, <laughs> but it's possible to do that. So, so basically, just being intentional about it yeah. Yeah. and setting time apart, and that helps. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, are you the mother? Yeah, personally, um, which I think is God sent and it came at the right time. Mm -hmm. But at the start of uh, this year, I was sort of on a spiritual journey mm -hmm. and I took up meditation, mm -hmm. which has been God sent. So I try and meditate once a day. Mm -hmm. I have different kinds of meditations. I don't want to get into it, yeah. but I feel it's so calming. Yeah. It's so relaxing just to find stillness in yourself and just to sit with your thoughts mm -hmm. and, you know, clear out the world, clear oh. Rona, clear all the troubles yeah. Yeah. and just, you know, have a conversation with yeah. yourself and God. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. You should take it up, ladies. Uh, if you're not meditating, <laughs> you need to hop on that bad I'm definitely <laughs> trying each of yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's wonderful. Um, what are you guys doing to stay sane? Mm -hmm. What is your routine? Yeah. Uh, what are those bits uh, that you've had to adjust in your life? What, what are the new things that you're doing to help you Stay sane because you know what? We gotta get through Miss Rona yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. So let us know what your self care tips are. We'd love to hear from you. Please share. Yes. Yeah. Now, today, ladies, mm -hmm. I, wanna, I want us to really, really get into it. And this is one of. Um, one of the things that I feel very passionate about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I will start, because I just don't want to preempt the entire conversation, <laughs> I will start by quoting one of my favorite authors, yeah. Chinua Achebe. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, the giant, yeah, the brilliant, Ooh, okay. <laughs> the godfather of oh. African literature, yeah. who said that until the lion has their historians, mm -hmm. the history of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I want, just right off the bat, I want to get your opinion, ladies. Mm -hmm. To what extent do you agree or disagree with uh, Mr. Chinua Achebe? I, I, I totally agree. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely 100% agree. agree. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. And this is because from the past couple of years, also getting into history myself mm -hmm. and getting into African literature, mm -hmm. I've noticed that there's a lot in African literature that is not really spoken about. Mm -hmm. There's what you see out there being given to us in primary schools in our curriculums mm -hmm. and what is uh, spoken about in the mainstream yeah. it doesn't even cover you know it doesn't, like, yeah, the surface, it doesn't right? even yes it just mm -hmm. scratches the surface mm -hmm. and there's so much nuance so many so much complexity in mm -hmm. our history yeah. that isn't really spoken about yeah and it, that's why i agree with you know i mean he's the godfather he knew he knew these things <laughs> 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 but yeah. wendy what, what do you think i, I couldn't agree more because uh -huh. when you really just think about it mm -hmm. and ask yourself um, how little we know about each other as Africans, mm -hmm. as opposed to how we know about, so, uh, for example, the Western world and mm -hmm. their history. Yes. Uh, so if somebody quizzes you on Angola or Seburundi <laughs> or any other country, yeah. you would be hard pressed to tell what their history has been like yeah. or where they're coming from, as opposed to all the facts that you know, your curriculum made you memorize about World yeah. War I, mm -hmm. World War Two. you know, the Absolutely. Great Depression, the, yeah. Yeah, with the dates, yeah, yeah. With the dates. So, yes. yeah. clearly that tells the, um, it shows that the person who documented that history was yeah. not us, mm. and what were their objectives, yeah. Yeah. you know? Can I throw in a spanner in those works? Uh -huh. Yes, that it's, there's a lot that is say that Africans are not interested in their own history and therefore it's white people who said that who said, who said that who said that to come and tell mistake? our story because <laughs> we don't want to tell our own story <laughs> uh, i don't know i think that's a i think that's a lot of hogwash yeah yeah of course yeah and you just because of the power dynamics it's like exactly what you said and yeah. what winston churchill said when the victor is writing this history of yeah. course, they're going to frame it in a way that glorifies that victor. Because they're telling their history. Mm -hmm. They're not being considerate of the other person or the mm -hmm. loser in this situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel historically, Africa has sort of been on the losing end. Africa yes. has gotten the short end of the stick. Yes. And we are coming from a place where our history has been told to us mm -hmm. and yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. yes as opposed to being told by, by us. us. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, I am happy that as time goes on and as our collective consciousness is being woken, mm -hmm. we are waking up to the fact that we need to tell our own exactly. stories. Yes. We need to exactly. tell our own stories. Now, just to rein this back mm -hmm. and go back to what Achebe said. Mm -hmm. You know, Achebe <clears throat> is one of the most famous post-colonial African writers, yeah. you know, if I may say that. And a lot of his works focused on not only the colonial African society, mm -hmm. but the post-colonial African societies reflecting on the kinds of governance or governments yeah. that yeah. we inherited from colonization. Yes. And I, also, I want to ask you, how do we feel about post-colonial African leadership? <laughs> How instrumental were they in preserving an authentic African history? Mm -hmm. <sighs> yes, I, I just, I, um, it's quite obvious, mm -hmm. I think, for most, yeah, mm -hmm. that what was the governments of the day at the time, they inherited this uh, culture, yes, yeah, that was more that catered more for the elite of that time, mm -hmm. yeah? So 
what they what the elite wanted was basically what was in need for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they were not at all thinking about the people. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so different from our systems, mm -hmm. which I'm not going to call traditional. I don't even know why they keep calling them traditional. Mm -hmm. From our African systems, mm -hmm. which were always thinking mm -hmm. about the people. Collective. Yes. Collective. Collective. Yes. yes. And there was nothing wrong with this system. If there was something wrong with it, it was something that just needed fixing. Yeah. So how do you go about take, uprooting a whole system and bringing another one and trying to fit everyone in that box? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything, trying things that we had never heard of before, mm -hmm. yeah. trying to make us all work in this way that the colonialists were yes. working. Yeah. yeah. What do you expect? Yeah. Would that be violence? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> yes, because I mean it's it's something foreign. Yeah, and I don't think Africans were given the opportunity to choose or to design or to design a new normal or even to design a system that marries in with our cultures yes. and our beliefs yeah. and our way of life. Yeah, so it was almost like. Clean cut, mm -hmm. forget everything. Throw else. away yeah, this one. It everything. is useless. Yeah. Yes. Forget everything <laughs> and embrace the yeah. new yeah. the new normal as yeah. you say. Yeah. 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 yeah, and and I think that's one of the reasons we see a lot of violence coming mm -hmm. off fresh off the independence yes. movements. Yes. yes. And and um a lot of heartache from the people who thought that independence yeah. would look a certain way uh -huh. and looked a whole different yes, kind of yes, 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 yes. And of course, because the states or the government want still wanted to be seen as mm. in their best light, we have a lot of things that are not spoken about. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. wherever you look across the continent, there are a lot of things that happened that were not officially documented. Mm. Yes. That were always hush hush. You mm -hmm. cannot talk about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that really excites me about uh, literature and writing because. Now you cannot rein in the imagination yeah. of people yes. going back yes. to those times yeah. and correcting that story and te telling that story mm -hmm. properly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I want to bring in something because I think sometimes people don't understand the importance of history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because just like let's say for uh, a young girl who goes through abuse mm -hmm. in their life, mm -hmm. in the grow up, mm -hmm. yeah. There will definitely be this trauma will be something yeah, that will yeah. affect them in yeah. their adults' life. Mm -hmm. Now, African states mm -hmm. went through trauma. Yeah. True. When the colonialists came in, mm -hmm. there was some trauma. This change, there was trauma, there was a lot of heartache that was there was a lot of violence. Yes. Yes. There was yeah, there was plunder, there was a lot that was yeah. taken out of the African people. Yeah. Not just the people themselves, yeah. not yeah. just the resources. Yeah. If there was a lot of damage that was done. Yeah. And we can't just forget this damage. Yeah. Yeah. Because these core values that were instilled during that period. Mm. Yeah? yeah. Are those still the, those are the core values that we're still living at this yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. And they are foreign. Exactly. Yes. And if the value at the time yeah. was that take as much as you want, yes. yeah. yeah. The value at the, at the time was think about yourself. Yes. Eh? What are you people getting? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter who's yeah. at the bottom, who you're taking away from. It doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. If those were the core values that yeah and they're still the core values that's now. What, that's what we are replicating yeah exactly. absolutely how are you surprised with what is happening during this time yeah mm -hmm. how are you surprised with the racism that is going on with the ethnic violence that yeah. is happening because you know i agree completely and africa during the colonial days mm -hmm. was governed through violence yes of course. so it was not this whole democracy thing is a farce like let's not even let's not lie. There was no democracy <laughs> no. during no. colonization, Never. right? Never. Everything was enforced through violence. Yeah. And you know the sad thing is as Africans, do we feel that our founding fathers or the leaders that were installed in Africa <laughs> post independence <laughs> installed do we, the world? Do we then feel there was a betrayal? Yeah. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Do we oh feel there was a betrayal? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and and just to reference what you said, uh, history is written by the victim. Yeah. So the person that was even installing the leaders, mm -hmm. they did that to preserve their interests. Yes. yes. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. it's no shocker that the system 
it's still the same mm -hmm. the same that we are living through yes. yeah that has an african elite mm -hmm. and everybody else yeah and this african elite um their first mandate is to preserve themselves yes yeah. and by extension uh still serve the the masters yeah you know in the shadows yeah. yeah. yes. and i call the dynasty i yes. think yes. in kenya we keep talking about dynasties yes. mm -hmm. And this is something that is very perverse over across the continent. Yeah. We have so many current presidents who are children of former presidents. Mm -hmm. We have so many leaders who are relatives of former, you know, former presidents, yeah. wives or, you know. Yeah. We've yeah. sort of created some sort of dynasties within yes. Africa. Some elite ruling class. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's, it's no secret that mm -hmm. there was no scorecard during independence. I mean, the presidents that took over, yeah. they didn't have to do much. They, all they had to do was... A state president. <laughs> <laughs> state president for life. Yeah. Which a lot of them, yeah. Yes. Right. yeah. Yes. They, they, didn't, they did not have to bring in any sort of uh, innovations. Yeah. They did not yes. have to improve the economy. Yeah. Africans were happy with, oh my goodness, we have an African president. Yes, yes. but <laughs> the only difference was the color of the skin. Yeah. But the ideals were still the same. Yeah. Yeah. The system of governance was still the same. Mm -hmm. Because, let's be honest, mm -hmm. if a system is favoring you, what motivation do you have to change it? Nothing. <sighs> so we got a crop of leaders who inherited a system that was beneficial to them yeah. because the system was beneficial to the colonizers. Yeah. And instead of you know reverting back to the African culture, the African way of life, mm -hmm. they were like, hey guys, it's an opportunity to increase <laughs> my wealth yes. yeah, and make people. sure my grand, 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 great it's kids sorted. will never have to work, yeah. you know? Yeah. And us living in the 21st century, we are still reeling from the effects of our founding fathers or the yeah. post-colonial leaders, mm -hmm. which I think it's actually quite, quite sad. sad. It's so <laughs> sad. sad. And, quite sad. And this is a perfect starting point yeah. because informing yourself mm -hmm. and informing yourself of the facts and the and the correct narrative yeah. is the first step in first knowing yeah. and then correcting that yeah because um if you if you look at the curriculum which is state sanctioned yeah you will not find a lot of things that what happened yeah. or you'll find them in a glossed over yes glossed over style right yeah yeah so those are the, some of the things that as people living today yeah we need to correct cause correct yes by yes. telling ourselves the correct the right story yeah starters of where we are coming from mm -hmm. because you cannot go somewhere if you don't know where you're where you from. come yes yeah yes yes, yes. yes. So, and, there, and there are very many avenues right yeah. now mm -hmm. of doing that there are a lot of online resources yeah. some of which we can link yes and which which definitely which brings me back to mm -hmm. um the next thing I wanted to talk about. So I just don't want you to preempt it. I'm sorry okay. for <laughs> interrupting you. <laughs> I'm sorry for interrupting you. Yeah. But yeah, I wanted to ask two questions. Mm -hmm. One is then as a new generation, mm -hmm. you know, our our platform is all about putting things back together. Yes. Of course. So yeah. as this new generation what can we do to try and put things back together yes. or what are we seeing being done yeah. and then i also want to tie that in with the place of literature mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in filling these gaps mm -hmm. you know our show is anchored on literature and how lit and, and that intersection between literature and life and, and culture yeah. and i also want us to look at this in terms of how then is our literature especially african literature how does it then bridge the gap that official records have filled? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ms. Shaba, what do you think? You know, I think the phrase that comes to mind first thing mm -hmm. is speaking your truth. Mm -hmm. And I know this phrase sounds like it's been overused, yeah. but what this means basically is we have to tell the story. Yeah. We don't, we can't expect other people to come from outside Africa yeah. and tell our our stories in an authentic way. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yes, yeah. so, so yeah. it needs to come from us. Mm -hmm. And that means that we should not be afraid. We should feel empowered, mm -hmm. yeah, to, to talk about these things, whether it is in social media, mm -hmm. whether yeah. it is in the 
for writers the books you're writing. Yeah. Because one thing that is really so important is that the perspectives that you're bringing out in our writing, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. are, are is is uh, that what are being heard by the world. Yes. This is the story that is being told out there by the yeah. world. So, for example, if in your book all you keep talking about, let's say, um, for you a specific region, a specific country, mm -hmm. we, we are talking about, you know, poverty. Yeah. Which is the only thing that is being heard about this place. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. How else will that, will the people know that the culture for this place is, yeah. is so spectacular? Or yeah. The food, How will they know that the food is awesome? Yeah. If all they keep hearing is poverty, this poverty. Yes. Life. Yeah. So we need to change the narrative as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Not keep harping on issues, harping on things and harping on the negative things yes. that are there mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. a specific region. Of course we have to talk about the issues. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But that doesn't mean we forget yeah. the, the, beauty. the beautiful the beauty. thing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're not burying our heads in the sun. <laughs> exactly. But we're also telling a, a, a diverse story of Africa. Mm -hmm. Because Africa is not a monolith. Yeah. You yes. know? Yeah. It's it's not just about poverty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we 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 are so diverse. Yes. And hopefully I guess what you're saying is we need to see that reflected <clears throat> in our literature, our exactly. art, exactly. and and how we choose to present ourselves to mm -hmm. the world. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And and I have seen a lot of literature mm -hmm. that has really brought out issues while also, you know, telling the story in a proper way. Yeah. And one of these that I want to really highlight is House of Stone. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. House of Stone uh, is written by <coughs> Nobria Rosa. Uh, Nobria Rosa, yes. Yes. And this story is written in such a, I would say, genius way, mm -hmm. such an, a wonderful way, because she brings out the 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 war that was happening at the time, mm -hmm. Gukurahundi, which is something that in Zimbabwe is not spoken about. Mm -hmm. It is something that was so heartbreaking mm -hmm. for the people who went through it yeah. that it has sort of been sanitized mm -hmm. out of the books. No one wants to talk about yeah. it. But she talks about it mm -hmm. and she brings it out in such a way that you can feel yeah, mm -hmm. you can feel the heart heartache that these people mm -hmm. were going through. Mm -hmm. And she goes into it in such a an interesting way. Yeah. Yeah. And spins it in such a way that you want to read this book. Yeah. And that's why what you're saying is history doesn't have to be boring. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> history yeah. can be written in, in fiction mm -hmm. so that people are able to read this thing yes. and able to uh, tell these stories to to their children yeah. going forward because sometimes if you tell people to to go and read a historical book they're thinking what yeah oh, well, <laughs> so very academic yeah. Degraded, yeah. You know, all those yeah. memories yeah, yeah. i like so i like what you're saying yeah. about educating ourselves in a fun way yes. yeah and in a really accessible way yes and that's the one thing i'm forever grateful for books like uh, Chimamanda Ngozi's uh, yeah. Half of a Yellow Sun. Mm. Before reading Half of a Yellow Sun, I had never heard of Biafra yeah. mm -hmm. or the Biafran War. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 so yeah. the book is, follows a couple, um, two people who end up falling in love, but the backdrop of it is very political, very yeah. powerful, Yes, because it's set in a time period where the North South Eastern Nigeria mm. wanted to secede from the Greater Nigeria yeah. and uh, annexed a whole part of a mm -hmm. country yeah. and called it Biafra mm -hmm. and the hopes of that. And had I not read this, I would have thought, you know, that I, I, I didn't know that something yeah. like that happened. And so there are all those instances where we can go out of our way to read widely. Mm -hmm to read uh, from places that we normally don't, yeah. mm -hmm. especially from other African countries that we have not encountered. Yeah. So that we just broaden our, yeah. you know, our perspective yeah. on yeah. Or what's I mean, out there. And, and what's more interesting than being educated in a fun way? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's the beauty of literature, yeah. especially historical fiction, is that it gives yeah. you a real raw side of history, mm -hmm. but presents it in a story form, yeah. which makes it interesting. So yeah. you're learning, but you're enjoying. Yes. Yeah. Mm. 
Well, a book I want to reference, and I think it's timeless, I think it's absolutely brilliant, mm -hmm. is The Shadow King by Maza Mengiste mm -hmm. um, from Ethiopia. And this book honors the women who were sent, who sort of took center stage during the second Italian invasion, mm -hmm. 1935, in Ethiopia. And again, as you know, Sheba and Wendy said, there are parts of history that are sort of erased mm -hmm. from the human consciousness. Yeah. And the contribution of women in the Ethiopian Italo Italo-Ethiopian war mm -hmm. is a part of history that was also completely erased. And I absolutely love how Maza Mengiste in her Booker 2020 long listed mm -hmm. book. Yes. Yay, it's been long listed. <laughs> yes, I love it. Yes. You know, she honors these women and she tells their story. Mm -hmm. And you know, she doesn't shy away from creating flawed characters, mm -hmm. flawed women, because again, we're not talking about a sanitized history. We're yeah. talking about yes. a real history. Yes. A whole human experience. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And we understand, we are very cognizant of the duality of yeah. human nature. Yes. <laughs> and the fact that Maza Mengisto was able to bring that out in the book. So yes, you are empathizing with these women, yes. you're understanding their plight, but they've also not been painted wow as caricatures or, mm. or, or you know, perfect mm. or just the one side. Yes. It's absolutely br brilliant, you know, and it opens up your mind to what else am I missing? Yeah. What are the other stories mm. that I haven't had? Mm. What can I do to learn more? Thank true, you. True. Yes. And you know, there's Thank so much you. complexity and nuance in history. Mm. It is not a linear, oh, in 1986, Sidri Wu took over yeah. for president, yeah. <laughs> and then in 1970, what? You know, it's not linear. There yeah. is so much complexity to history yeah. that we need to explore. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We can't just sit back and, and let, you know, the reigning government of the day tell us yeah. what history is and what, what they want us to know yeah. so that they can continue perpetrating the views that they want us to hear. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely. So um, I don't know what are your what are your final thoughts, Wendy, on on this very it can be an absolutely long I conversation. Know. Yeah, but I'm <laughs> trying to bring it in. Yeah. So I want to get sort of your closing uh, comments, your closing thoughts. You know, on... I hope I would I would go on about this for days. Okay. <laughs> but I just hope that you've been inspired to explore. Yeah, and to read to read more. And I love what you said about. Um, a book inspiring you to find out more. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's one of my markers of find, of knowing that I've read a good, a book. good book. If it leaves mm -hmm. me thirsting for more, mm -hmm. I, you know, like, if you read a book and you're like, oh my gosh, why didn't I know this? Mm -hmm. And yeah. then we also yeah. find, out about, find this. out about this. Then it becomes that gateway yeah. for you to open a whole new dimension yeah. in your life that you didn't even know existed. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope you're inspired mm -hmm. to read some of the books that we mentioned. Yeah to let us know what are the books that we can read. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Shiva. So, I, I would just like to ask people to find out about um, things like, I know you probably haven't heard about this. Have you heard about the Wagawa massacre? Have you heard about the Chatemba war? Have you heard about Gukurahundi, as we said? Mm -hmm. Have you heard about any of this? So if you haven't heard about them, go, go and search. Yeah, mm -hmm. do your research read about them and share share even those others that you probably haven't heard about yeah, please share them in the comments yeah. and let's let's discuss even in the comments and you may, maybe we could do a future uh follow-up series yeah of, of these other you know uh, wars these other issues that yeah. have happened in our history that we don't know about definitely yeah i mean i don't think history is is a subject that you can conclude in one sitting. Yeah. Like it's so broad because you know what? What we talked about five minutes ago is already history. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if, if you're talking about the expansivity of history, mm. this video is already history. It's, it's already history, exactly. Yeah. 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 So I want to highlight just a couple of the books we have talked about: uh, The Shadow King by Maza Mengiste, um, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie with Half of a Yellow Sun. House of Stone by Nobuyo Rosa Shuma, and we have one more Chintu by Jennifer Nansubuga Makumbi. This is just a drop in the ocean, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> we're going to share a couple more resources that we feel are books that 
are very enlightening in terms of um, African history, where we are from, because you know, you never know where you're going. Until you, you know where you're coming from. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so as we try and put things back together, yeah. it is our responsibility to educate ourselves and learn. Yes. And, you know, we need to stop taking things that we have been told as gospel truth. Yeah. We need to be interrogative. Mm -hmm. We need to question. Mm -hmm. And we question that through books. Yeah. And these are just amazing authors who are putting in the work. Yes. You know, if you have any more resources, please feel free to share with us. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, we hope to see you in our next episode. That was it for things. Follow together. together. Bye. <laughs> have a good week and take care of yourselves. Yeah.